Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 Framework Tutorial. This is our part 2. Inside this video session guys, we will discuss about directory structure, what we have installed in the first video of Laravel. And also guys, if you are looking of the blog articles of KKPHP 4, Code Igniter 4, MySQL, so you must visit this website to get more interesting blog articles with different different topics. Now if I back to browser, this is the website of blogging that actually we are talking about something onlinewebtutorblog.com and inside this we can find all about the category wise blog articles in the section of MySQL, WordPress, CodeIgniter 4, CakePHP and several. Now if I scroll down as we can see recently we have posted called working with Kick PHP 4 cron jobs. Also we have cookie helper. Scrolling this is all about Node.js, SQLize, ORM, CRUD APIs and several interesting topics actually we can find inside this blogging website. So you need to visit once and get your interesting articles with good contents. Now if I back to slide, so inside this video we will discuss about directory structure. While working with any framework like Laravel or any other programming language, you need to first understand that is what is the importance of directory structure and where actually we will place our working files. So in the last video, as we know that we have installed a Laravel 8 framework. So what I did, simply I have opened that actually the project inside my VS Code editor. So inside this project, what we have, we have several files and several folders. Also, if we back directly to the directory structure, here is the folder we have created a the default name called blog and inside this we can see we have a app folder, bootstrap, config, database, public, resources, routes and so on. So step by step we will discuss about each folder and files. Back to editor. So as we know that there are multi files, multiple files inside this project. So first of all, we need to understand those folders and files which is very important to understand at the beginner's level. Because while working step by step inside this course, we will explore all about the folders and files. But right now, we need to understand about MVC hierarchy inside this project setup. If suppose we explore all about the files and folders inside this single video then it might be get some confusion in our mind that is how can we work with these folders. So first of all we will move with the MVC hierarchy to understand all about the working principles so that we can control all about some controllers models and views from the next video. So first of all if you go inside this app directory, this is important directory, inside this folder we have a HTTP folder. Also apart from this HTTP folder, we have a models folder. In the previous version of Laravel, we don't have any models folder. We always used to create our models file inside this app directory. Those files automatically get stored inside this app folder. There is no specific folders to store models files. But now we have a models folder. So when we create any models via our artisan command, then those models automatically get stored inside this models folder. So this is M. As we know MVC supported framework so M stands for model we will store models file inside this models directory. Models are those files which is going to interact with the database and we can perform all the database operations. 
Next, we need to understand about the symbol V, which is stands for views files. So for the views files, if I scroll down, we have a resources folder. Inside this resources folder, we have several files like CSS, JS, language file. So we don't need to actually worry about these folders. Simply we need to look over this views folder. So when we create any view file for any of the route inside application, so those view files we will store inside this views directory. Now next we need to understand all about controllers because inside MVC keyword we have models, views. Now this time we have controller. So for the controller we need to go to back app directory inside we have HTTP and inside this we have controllers folder. So when we create or configure any controller inside application, we need to do all settings inside this controllers folder. So this is all about MVC hierarchy. Now next let's understand about this console folder. Actually we already understood about MVC pattern. So inside this console folder we have a kernel.php. Now if I open up this file now inside this file, we can see that here we have a commands array variable. Also we have a schedule method. We have a command method. So while going through these files, we understood that this is a kernel.php file inside this console and this file controls all about the application console commands. It means if we create any console command inside this application to execute, so we need to register those commands for the console inside this kernel.php. Close this file. This is for the console command registration. Go inside these exceptions. The name suggests that our application exceptions handled by this exceptions folder. Now inside this folder, we have handler.php which is going to handle all the exceptions what actually we will get inside this application. Also in some cases, if we want to register our own custom exception, then also we can register as we can see here. We have a register method. By the help of that, we can proceed with the exception handler methods. Inside this HTTP folder, we already understood about these controllers. Now we have a middleware folder. Middleware folder contains those files which is going to filter our request. Suppose we have developed some applications in which we want to filter all the requests on the basis of authenticated and unauthenticated. So by using the middleware concept, actually we can filter the request what we'll get inside application. Inside this we can see we have several files. So about these files of middleware, we will explore in upcoming videos of this course. So right now we are not going to discuss about that. Only for now, we need to understand that inside this folder, these all files which is going to work with our routes and application. Next we have kernel.php. Inside this file, if we look, then we have a middleware which is an array. Inside this we have some middleware classes. As we can see here, we have some middleware groups like web and API. We have like route middlewares. It means that this is the folder actually where we configure all about the aliases and all about class registration. This is all about the classes files and aliases what actually we have configured inside this kernel.php. If we want to create some routes and on those routes, if we want to restrict or make actually any type of filter, then these aliases are very helpful to actually implement all about our request filters. Now next we have called the providers folders because models already discussed. Next we have 
providers folder inside this providers folder we have several files so all the files of providers are basically used to register any type of services inside our Laravel 8 application now if we open the first file called app service provider so inside this class simply we can find the definition called this class file means app service provider is simply is going to register any application services next we have auth service provider this is all going to register any authentication and authorization services so while working inside this course if we want to register or create any type of services then we need to create that file inside this providers folder we will create inside this course all about our custom providers and we will see how can we work with services inside application now next we have called bootstrap this is the folder is going to boot means this is the not actually the css bootstrap folder this is a bootstrap folder which is going to make our bootstrapping application inside this we have a cache folder cache folder is going to means contain all of the cache file which is very helpful for the speed optimization inside this we have app.php which is helpful to make our application bootstrapping next we have the config folder name itself clears that all the configuration of this Laravel 8 application we will store inside this folder so here we have called app.php auth.php broadcasting cache and several inside this we have called session mail.php database.php so this folder is going to contain all of the configuration files if suppose we want to set our email settings like SMTP server so we need to go back inside this config open up called this mail.php and inside this mail.php we can set all about our SMTP details so that after configuration we can use email services now next we have called database folder inside this we should have factories migrations and seeders this is same as the previous version inside this we need to store our factory files migrations which is going to provide the schema or database table architectures next we have the seeders file which is going to provide the dummy data for our database tables here we have a public folder inside this public folder here we have index.php .htaccess file a favicon icon and here we have robots.txt file so when we run application as we can see inside last video that we have two methods to run our application either we can run via php artisan serve command or by means of url typing so after URL typing into the browser, we had seen, we need to go to the browser, type our project, after project folder name, we need to provide public folder name. So after typing public folder name, index.php file actually executed. So in the next videos, we will understand that how can we remove like index.php or the public folder from the URL. To generate actually neat and clean URLs inside this resources folder and one more thing if suppose in our application we have some like CSS file JavaScript files any images so we need to store all those files inside this public folder because public folder is going to contain all of the public accessible files now inside this resources folder now you are going to bit confusion about that the confusion is that inside this resources folder also we have CSS JS lang so what these folders are so simply lang and means language files 
if our application is built in multiple languages like we have created our site inside English language like we have created in French language so to store multiple languages files we need to make use of this lang folder also here we have CSS and JS but already discussed that if we want to store any of the public accessible files we need to store inside this public folder so what is this these are those folders which is going to contain uncompiled CSS and JS files like if we want to st means store some SAS and less files then we will make use of this resources folder now next we have routes folder this is all about the configuration of routes of application like here we have called web.php which is going to contain the routes of application of website if we are building some apis so those apis routes we will configure inside this api.php and as we know that inside this console folder we need to create our console commands so inside this routes folder here we have console.php so inside this console.php we need to register our command what we have created inside this console folder now next we have a storage folder this is going to contain all about the generated log files of framework now if we open that folder here we have app framework and logs so this folder basically contains all about the compiled files what we will generate from this app folder means app folder next we have all about this framework and our temporary log files it is recommended that while working we don't need to actually touch this folder called storage otherwise our temporary files will be lost or application somewhere it is going to crash so while working the point of interest of working is all about this app folder config database public and routes folder and also resources folder next we have test this is used to contain our php unit testing files next we have vendor this is all about is going to contain our composer install files because in the last video when we had installed all about the level 8 version so inside that we had seen that the composer had installed multiple files so those dependencies and packages actually stored inside this vendor folder here we have dot env file dot env file stands for our environment variables so inside this environment variables we have the fastest way to configure all about the database connections drivers redis our smtp details as we can see here so this is the fastest way to configure all about our by using application environment variables otherwise if you're not interested to set inside this dot env so for the database connection we need to go inside this config and this database dot php these are individual files but after combining some of the variables of all these files actually we have a dot env file next we have artisan this is the global file by the help by the help of which actually we can execute our terminal commands inside terminal so simply guys step by step all we had discussed all about the files and folders of this level 8 application so from the next video we will understand about that is how can we execute our first program that is by creating a controller a simple route and a few file and also if you are interested to learn something more in this directory structure simply back to laravel.com official website click on documentation it will land you to the means landing page of 8th version go inside this and getting started now you will see a directory structure sub menu so when you click on this directory structure you will see that the step by step all about the details of these folders 
so in the next video guys we will discuss some more so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day